بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد ولو أن أهل القرى آمنوا واتقوا based on the taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the barakat and the blessings from the heaven now if we speak to the kuffar and the disbelievers and speak to them about baraka they cannot comprehend it's beyond their perception and belief it is something that is not logical it cannot be absorbed it cannot be digested it's not a concept which can be understood let us look in the olden days a family of 10 12 15 18 would cook one chicken all of them would eat they would send for the neighbors and there would still be leftovers today in a family of four they cook four chickens they short there's no leftovers nothing to give anybody else so that's baraka a believer eats with one stomach a kafir eats with seven stomachs in the olden days there was baraka in time you would meet everybody family relatives be there for all nowadays people only meet when it's a wedding and in before covid funerals now even in funerals we don't even meet no weddings so baraka in time and the actual baraka is not only in baraka in dunya we benefit in the worldly terms and achievement but in deen and uh, we need to understand this baraka in deen otherwise baraka in dunya will come that baraka in dunya is there it's lazim malzum if a person makes effort on deen that's the formula to crack when a person sacrifices for deen gives for the deen of allah spends for the deen of allah then Allah gives him dunya. So a person, for example, gives in sadaqah. So Allah nourishes that sadaqah. So he has five, he gave it away in charity. Mathematically in the Western world, you have zero. And that same person had to put it in interest. He had five after one year, he's got six. After five years, he's got 10. So logically, it says the person who gave sadaqah decrease. And the person who got involved into interest increased. That's the logic. But Allah is saying that the person who gave sadaqah has increased his wealth. Yurubis sadaqat. It's increased multifold. Allah nourishes it. So he gave five, he'll get 50, he'll get 500, he'll get 5,000. And the other person who put it in the interest system, فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ Allah. He is declared war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in actual fact, he is the one that is at loss. Forget the five that became ten that you will lose. But everything else that's connected to that will also be a loss. So deen is not about logic and using our intelligence and, and using intellect. But it is more about what Allah and His Rasul is saying to follow and to comply with that. Mawlana Inam al-Hassan used to give an example. He said, you are in a room, one window is closed, the other window is open. That window that is open, you are receiving items. So the wind comes in, but it stops there. So while you are receiving, but once you open the other window to give away, then there's a continuous flow of wind. Means the more, the faster you can give, the faster Allah will replace it. Anfiq ya Bilal. O Bilal, spend. Wala takhsha. Don't fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala poverty, iqlala. That it'll be decreased, it'll be low. No. So, a person has a sheikh, rahimahullah, you should give example. Some people buy the cow for the milk. Some buy it for the dung. The wise buy it for the milk, they'll get the milk and the dung. The foolish buy it for the dung, they don't ever get milk. When you ask for a glass, you only get the glass. When you ask for water, the glass comes with it. We ask for deen, Allah will bring the dung with it. 
We ask for the milk of deen, Allah will send the dung all automatically. But we go for the dung of dunya, we're not sure if you will get deen. So it's a matter of priority. Prioritize in our life. This is the formula, the, the formula in humanity everybody's been searching for. It's a simple formula. One day husband comes home, the wife is crying, sobbing in tears. Husband say, Bichari, wife, what's wrong? He said, you know what, our uh, young son is quite ill. I'm worried about him. What if he dies? And she's in tears, expressing her grief to her husband. So he tries to console. So oh, my beloved darling wife, don't stress. Sadaqa is a means of shifa. So I'll go and slaughter one sheep and whatever else needs to be done after that, we'll do it. But let me slaughter a sheep and inshallah through the barakah of that qurbani Allah will give him shifa. Now another day it happened that the husband comes home depressed, sad, in tears. Now the wife tries to console Bichara husband, maybe he had a long day, maybe this. So she asked him what's wrong? He said, no, one of my sheep got sick and I'm worried it will die. I'm worried it will die. So. The wife said, you know what, take the eldest son and slaughter him, inshallah to the barakah of this qurbani Allah will give him shifa. To the barakah of this qurbani Allah will give him shifa that never has happened, will never happen. Allah make us maaf, we are doing that every day. We supposed to be slaughtering the sheep, dunya, for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in place we've slaughtered the deen of Allah, our sons, for the shifa for our dunya to come right. Look at the highways, look at the railways, look at the airports, look at the airwaves. We are seeing people sacrificing for dunya. Who is sacrificing for deen? Two, three, four billion day an exodus on earth every morning. The exodus for dunya. So the formula for barakah, we need to understand the formula for barakah. Malan Umar Palan Puri Rahmatullah used to say, In the Khilafat of Azad Umar radiallahu an, what Allah Jalla Jalaluhu gave Sahaba, if they had to make effort, 20, the year was 26 years, and they had to make effort a thousand years. If they had to make effort a thousand years in any other avenue, striving for dunya, and they use all their resources, they would have not got what they got in the era of making effort for deen. Nabi Ali salatu was salam, era if we look at 13 years and uh, uh, Abu, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu two and a half years and 10 years Khilafat of Umar radiallahu anhu, almost two thirds of the earth, the Persian and Roman Empire's treasures were sitting in the laps of Sahaba. So barakah is the barakah in deen. Somebody was in the battlefield as Abu Ayyub Ansari was there. A youngster told somebody who advanced to the enemy that وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى تَهْلُكَ Don't throw yourself into destruction. He said, I was there when this ayah was revealed. What are you talking about? It does not refer to this. We, the Ansar, had sacrificed everything. But when we went to Nabi والسلام, to ask for permission to spend a little bit time for dunya, these ayat were revealed, don't throw yourself, your hands into destruction. So we shouldn't break the formula. They were still thinking, let us spend some time on dunya to sort out our dunya. Allah sorted the dunya of Sahaba such very rare ever in history in such a short span had so much wealth come to somebody in their laps that Masjid al-Nabawi was filled with heaps of gold. So Baraka, the first meaning is stability. So Baraka, when a, a camel kneels, ibtaraka al-jamal. So the Arabs would say that when a camel kneels down, barakatil ibilu. The camel has knelt, knelt and went down. So when it kneels, it's becoming stable and secure. 
it's unwavered, it's steady and stable. So for example, a person is working for a company and he knows his income is secure, it's stable. Then second meaning of perpetuity, al-istimrari, continuity. So the Arabs you say, ibtarakati sama, when rain falls and it continues coming and it carries on coming. Then uh, baraka is used as well, or birka, which is the Arabic word for a pond. So when there's a pond, there's a hose, there's a well, and you're taking out water and it's continually continuity of water. So it's preserved and it's perpetual. The person is working for a company, he knows it's secure, but now this company will not close down. It's such a strong company. He knows his job is not unstable. So Allama Manawin Fadul Qadir has mentioned Al Baraka is the continuance of divine goodness in something, for it to be continuous. The number three proliferation and uh, augmentation, a, a multiplication and increase. So Ibn Mandur in Lisan has mentioned that uh, Baraka is the growth and increase of something. So a person is working for this company, is earning X amount, but it's increasing from 50,000 to 60 to 70 to 80 to 100,000. Likewise, increase in uh, portfolio. He was a normal employee, now he's the manager. He's, he's climbing the corporate ladder, he's climbing the, the step ladder to the top. He's the CEO of the company. So the different meanings of Baraka. Like we saying, the baraka of deen and the baraka of dunya. So we need to imbibe deen. If we look at the seerah, and you will see the incident of Halima Sa'adiyya radiallahu anha, the first mother of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the wet nurses refused to take care of Nabi alayhi salam because he was an orphan. Halima Sa'adiyya then took Nabi alayhi salam in care and immediately she, she seen the Baraka. This was a Mubarak child, unlike other. The camel, which was quite weak, extremely weak, and traveled slowly, and the other wet nurses had advanced, and they had become annoyed at her pace. But when she put Nabi wasalam, on her lap, on her camel, it was so Mubarak that it began to speed and out then all the other camels. Likewise, it could not give milk and there was a drought was weak, but the moment she became and took responsibility of Nabi salam, Allah blessed her with so much milk. So she could not, she was weak, she was frail, she was undernourished. She just took Nabi salatu wasalam and Allah blessed her with so much milk that even other children began to suckle for milk. When they entered the home, it was simple, it was filled with baraka. The sheep and goats were very weak, they became healthy so much that uh, the people who refused to take Nabi wasalam, started taking milk from her goats. So the ulama have explained that deen is an orphan and there's nobody ready to take and look after this orphan. Those that take this responsibility and become the Halima Saadiyah of this ummah for deen, this orphan of deen, Allah will give them barakah in their possessions, in their wealth, in their assets, in their time. Even the people around them will benefit. Even the people around them will benefit. And the actual barakah in dunya is something supplementary, secondary. It is tertiary. The actual barakah is the barakah in deen. And if you look at the pious predecessors, how Allah had given them barakah in deen. Uthman radiallahu an sometimes would recite the entire Quran in a single rakat of witr. As Abdullah ibn Zubair used to recite the entire Quran in a single night. Sayyid ibn Jubair 
read the entire Quran in two rakats inside the Kaaba. Thabit Banani used to read the whole Quran in a day and night. Likewise, Abu Huraira radiallahu an, Abu Shaykh an Nai rahmatullahi said, I read the entire Quran twice and ten parts in a single night. Seventy paras in a single night. If I wanted to, I could have completed a third reading as well. Ninety paras, three khatams in a single night. Na'udhu Billahi, we speak about barakah to the kafir, they can't believe it. We should doubt our Iman. If we are wondering how is it possible, Allah gave them barakah in their time. Salih ibn Kaysan used to complete in his Hajj Safar two khatams, two complete recitings each night. Mansur ibn Zazan completed one khatam during Nafal Salah before noon. And between Dhahar and Asr, he made a second khatam. And then the entire night he would spend in Nafal Salat, crying to Allah so much that his turban would become wet and soaked with the tears. Imam Nawi Rahmatullah in Kitab al Athkar has mentioned the maximum daily recitation reported for the Khatams of Quran is Ibn al Katib, who used to complete eight. Khatams, eight complete khatams, 240 ajza, paras of the Quran in a 24 hour period. In a 24 hour period. So these were the individuals who draw and drew from the, the khazanas and the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said about Thabit Banani rahmatullah alayhim that he used to cry so much while making dua. People said you will lose your eyesight. He said what use are these eyes if they do not weep before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he used to make a dua Allah give me ijazat to for offer salah in my cupboard if you give anybody this. So a narrator Abu Sanan says, I was, I was there at the uh, takfeen and the burial of Thabit Banani and when he was placed in the cupboard, one of the bricks, the planks fell on the side. I peeped inside and I seen him reading Salah. So I told the person next to me, look what's happening. He said, just keep quiet. We went to the daughter and we said, what special practice your father did? She said that what, what did you see? She, we related the incident. She said he had been constant in his tahajjud for 50 years and every morning he would make dua that Allah give me tawfiq to offer salat in the cupboard if you gave anybody the privilege to do this. If you gave anybody the privilege to do this, give me tawfiq. So these were the men of Allah. Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal had a routine of 300 rakats nafal salah daily. And when he was lashed and beaten in an elderly age, 80 years, his routine changed to 150 rakats daily. Imam Shafi'i rahmatullahi completed 60 khatams of Quran in Ramadan and one in Farz, 61. Imam Bani Farahmatullahi also said that for, it is said about 30, 40, 50 years he would offer his Fajr Salah with the Wudu of Isha and he never slept. The only time he slept was in the afternoon. Saeed bin Musayyib for 50 years offered his Fajr Salat with the same Wudu of Isha. Uh, Imam Ghazali has mentioned that Allah less than 40 Tabi'eens done this for 40 years. So somebody would be marveling and wondering how is this possible? This is the Qudrat and the power and the Barakah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Akabir and Mashayikh. The Amal for today is that even if a person doesn't have, there was a monk 
and he worshipped Allah for 60 years and he went for a walk, he seen a female, he spent six nights with her, committed zina and then he realized he had done wrong, he came to a masjid and he said there somebody gave him a piece, a loaf of bread, he split it, he seen the people on the right and left in need, he split it between the two and uh, Allah sent the angel of death to take his rule and his 60 years of ibadah was placed with the six days of zina and the zina overweighed it. Then those pieces of bread was placed on the scale rajahasita it outweighed the six days. So sadaqa, even though we don't have whatever little we have, we need to try to give it. May Allah give us barakah and tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.